There's actually three things Chainsaw Man Part 2 does better than Part 1. Part 1 is super popular and it sells really well, but there's also a lot of people who either drop it right away or think it's overrated, even including people who like other Fujimoto stories like Fire Punch and Look Back. Fortunately, Fujimoto has actually taken these three flaws and used them to make Chainsaw Man even better in Part 2. The first of which is the character deaths. Of course, if you're not caught up on the anime, then this first part is going to be full of spoilers. By now, even anime fans understand how easily any given character can die in Chainsaw Man. Random NPCs are just a given, but even some of its most important characters can die 10 or even 15 chapters after they're introduced. For the most part, a lot of people actually like how this works. It creates this HBO drama suspense where you're conditioned into thinking none of your favorite characters are safe. You know, it keeps you on your toes and makes things more exciting. So a lot of people like that. But a lot of people also hate it. They see these characters die and they just don't feel anything. And even with a character like Himeno, her death comes out of nowhere. She is clearly meant to be an emotional character. A character we can relate to and a character we are supposed to feel attached to before she dies. But for a lot of people, her death doesn't carry any weight. Not to say it's completely unemotional, but the way she is killed is very unceremonious. She sacrifices herself, but that sacrifice doesn't do anything. On top of that, there's no tragedy, there's no loss. So you have these characters dying left and right, normalizing death and numbing its impact, and the way they die kind of just undermines their importance in the story. But in part two, things are a bit different. And I say a bit different because, if we're being honest, devils are still killing people. You know, death is still a constant in this story. But when we look at the important characters that have died so far, it's really only been Yuko. Now, of course, you might be like, well, how is Yuko any different? She basically stays around just as long as Himeno. True, but Fujimoto takes a slightly different approach to Yuko. See, with Himeno, Fujimoto fleshed out her character as much as he could. Then the tone of the story slows down, then the bad guys come out of nowhere, and suddenly she's dead. Yuko is different. Yuko comes along and she becomes friends with Asa. She goes out of her way to be friends with Asa and spend time with her. The contrast here is like, Himeno was interesting, but as far as Denji was concerned, she was just another character. Definitely impacted Aki, but for Denji, just another character. With Yuko, she was Asa's one true friend. It looked like the two of them were happy and made each other's lives better. Then she's like, hey man, don't come to school tomorrow, and you're like, what? Like, that chapter just hits you right in the face. And then, after the big fight at school, she comes to see Asa. They have this heartfelt moment, and it feels like they really are friends, like she's actually gonna come back. And then she gets brutally murdered. And not by some grandma or some rando villain. She gets killed by Chainsaw Man. At least, someone that looks like Chainsaw Man. And that's really the big difference. Chainsaw Man Part 1, everyone dies, and it's just whatever. Dude gets sliced up, somebody gets stepped on, let's go get some McDonald's. Chainsaw Man Part 2, people are still dying, but the only important character that dies is the main character's new best friend, and she gets killed viciously by the potential big bad of the series. Granted, it's pretty early, but so far character deaths are much more dramatic, and there's a real sense of loss. And part of that sense of loss is due to how time is spent in Chainsaw Man Part 2. See, that's the other thing people didn't like. Actually, before I get into that, make sure to like the video if you're enjoying it so far. It's the easiest way to support the channel, and it helps spread the video to other viewers like you. But like I was saying, a lot of people don't like the pacing. Chainsaw Man pacing is obviously unique, hence why it's become its own meme. A lot of people like the pacing. It's fast, it's action-packed. It keeps the story intense and makes it easier to binge. But a lot of people don't like it. While well, part one is full of action, there isn't really a lot of downtime. We'll have a chapter or two between arcs where the characters hang out, and you'll get those silly moments in between fights, but there's no flashback arcs, there's no side plots that flesh out the world building. And of course, the big offender is the fact that characters pop up and die kinda fast. Now, admittedly, this is another area where Fujimoto hasn't made any drastic changes. Part 2 still has the iconic, fast-paced storytelling, but like we said before, he has taken a slightly different approach. It's not so much, oh, well now he spends more time on characters, or whatever. Like I said, Yuko basically lasted just as long as Himeno, and the fights that we've seen so far are really just as long as, say, the fight against the Bat Devil, or the fight against the Muscle Devil. The only real difference is the time devoted to action and downtime is a bit more balanced. Take Part 1. 
In the first few chapters, it was fight, 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 and then the occasional scene in between. The first chapter of part two plays out pretty much the same as chapter one, but then the next big fight isn't until a few chapters later. In the meantime, the story focuses on the dynamic between Asa and Yoru and introducing Yuko. Then, before the big fight with the Justice Devil, we get a few more chapters to explore how Denji's school life is going, what Yoshida is up to, and then set the tension between Asa and Yuko. There's still a lot of action, but the time that goes into the fights isn't just supplemented. The time in between fights isn't just there for exposition. The story is told through a balance of action and downtime, making the downtime feel more important and the action feel more intense when it finally does happen. But that's not the only reason the fights feel different. Because the third problem people have with part one is actually Denji. I saw this complaint fairly often once the anime came around. As fun and uniquely meat-headed as Denji is, a lot of people are turned away by that. What many people find charming and refreshing, just as many people find basic and just plain gross. Denji is obviously a character with layers, but at least in the beginning he comes off as a simple character, and a lot of that is because he isn't really a morally conscious person. He's a good guy, but he's rarely ever like, oh, uh, wait a minute, is this the right thing to do? He's more concerned with what he wants. So while there's substance to his early fights, he can come off as selfish or even just a bad person. In contrast, this is the one area where Asa is completely different. Part of why the use of Yoru is so genius is because it gives Asa this potential for inner dialogues. Obviously she's talking to another person, but that person is now a part of her personality. So in a way she's basically talking to herself, which gives her an inner dialogue that is clearly distinct from Denji's. Whereas Denji contemplated what his motivation was and what he wanted to work towards, Asa tends to contemplate what's right and what's wrong. More recently she's been debating what kind of person she's willing to kill. She doesn't want to kill someone she deems a good person, but she can't turn a bad person into a weapon. The whole topic forces Asa to consider what she deems a good person and a bad person, and it makes her more interesting. Plus, if you're not a fan of Denji chasing girls and kicking guys in the nuts, you probably like Asa more because of this. She actually considers right and wrong, and it makes her more likable as a character. Although, it's definitely worth noting that she isn't perfect either. Nobody is perfect in this story, and Asa makes that pretty clear when she lectures Denji and basically tells him how she knows everything. But for the most part, killing people clearly bothers Asa, and it makes her stand out. She isn't necessarily a better protagonist than Denji, but so far she seems to solve the issues people had with Denji in part one. That, along with the character deaths and the improved pacing, have clearly taken part two in the right direction. Right now, Chainsaw Man only seems to be getting better. Nobody knows exactly where it's headed this early on. But with these three changes, it's probably going to make even more people love this story. But maybe you disagree. Do you think these changes have improved Chainsaw Man? Are there other complaints you still have? Share your thoughts and see what everyone else has to say down in the comments. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week on my community tab. And if you'd like another Chainsaw Man discussion video like this one, then make sure to check out my video on how Chainsaw Man gaslights you. In that video, I explain how Chainsaw Man's mainstream appeal is actually its biggest flaw. You can find that video in the playlist linked right here. Until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.